So we have everybody here, Julie, Janine, Janet, Janet. and as a guest, as a guest. Prudence, Prudence, Sheila, Susan, David, Art, what's your name again? Ruth, <laughs> Randy, and Jeff. Thank you all for being here. Uh, let's see, does anybody have any pressing issue? What brought you back? Yes, and I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, so I am Janet Beardsley, um, sort of new to Long. I've been here about a year now and have really started to enjoy participating in lots of wonderful things that the, the senior program has here. So um, I'm actually here because a few things fell into place very quickly and I thought, oh, I could come here on um, Wednesday and present this as a request more, more than anything else. So, I participate in the balance class that's over um, at the, uh, Memorial, the Memorial, Memorial Building. And the teacher, who is very, very good, her name is Kim, and it, it is filled with a lot of um, quite elderly people who are doing balance work. Um, and they have a hard time hearing. And Kim has a lovely voice, but it's a soft voice. So I went up to her afterwards and I asked her, is there any way we could get a microphone on you? And she said, we've tried that. It doesn't work because of the sound system in the memorial building. And she said, the only thing that would really work is, you know, we moved over to the senior center, but we can't do that because there are other things going on at the senior center at the time that she does her class from 10.30 to 11.30. And I thought, well, I intend to, to go to that meeting next Wednesday. I wonder if I could bring that up. Would you allow me to do that? He's and she notes. said, yeah. yes, she would. And so I guess what I'm trying to do is to appeal to you to, because it is a group that's having a hard time hearing, the system does not work well for her. Is there any way we could get Kim to do her balance class here rather than at the Memorial Center? She and many of the members of the participants would like to see that happen. And would it be okay if it stayed there if we figured out the mic? If you figure out the back, yes, of course it would. There's, okay. there's no many problem. times that that class has gone on and the batteries die or something goes wrong with the system as it is. Well, and it isn't just it the, the system, it, it's the sound yeah. in the room right. itself with the generators, or whatever it is, the airflow going on. It's just, it's complicated. And I can hear, I have good hearing. Um, so it isn't a problem for me, but I just it's want to try to It's a combination of factors. Right. Yeah. Okay. I wonder about if we move it here, the gym that we have would be a similar echo issue. And, um, but they have the sound panels there. Do they have the sound panels? I do, so yoga, I do a yoga class there on yeah. Tuesdays, and there's no problem with that. And there's no microphone on the teacher. So maybe it's a panel issue then. Panels? Yeah, it's a facility issue. We need facilities. Yeah. Okay. We are seniors. So the, yeah, the advantage that the gym here has is the ceiling has all of the acoustical tiling on it. Because when the senior center first opened after the remodel, it was just a nightmare. You couldn't hear anything. So let me do some investigation and uh, see what we can do. Thank you. Yeah. We, we really appreciate it. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks for bringing this sure. up. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. One more comment before we go to minutes like we're supposed to. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Would it um, make a difference if there was a time change in this class? No, it's the it's the facility. That's absolutely correct. It's a facility. Um, well, Kim, Kim has a soft voice, but that's not the issue. Yeah. The issue is the sound within the room. Yep. Um, that just is muffled with other noise going on. And the when they decided to have a day camp at this facility and have that class at the same time, that was like, mm -mm. So, you know, I, I also, I don't want to sound like I'm just a complainer. I want to say I do the yoga class here, and I also do the line dancing class here. Oh, my goodness, is that fun. That is just absolutely terrific. I, I am 
really inspired with the line dancing that goes on here. So know that uh, you provide some wonderful, wonderful programming um, for seniors. And okay, we'll like accept your seniors. complaints. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Janet. You're welcome. Quick recovery. <laughs> <laughs> okay, minutes from last month. Does anybody have corrections? Uh, down on action. Yeah. Oh, item D. Um, am I on that? I didn't know I was part of that. Or am I? The new interview process. Before. You're not part of that. That was Julie and Art. That's what I thought. Okay, so yeah. just scratch my name. Okay, and then I saw right above that C. That should have been Jeff, shouldn't it have been? Yes. Jeff updated yeah. one candidate. Yeah. And otherwise, I didn't see anything. I think it looks good. So, can I have a motion to accept the minutes as corrected? <coughs> Hard? Chill. Okay. Moving on. Prudence, could you and Susan sign that? <laughs> can't give I now. bet you can't wait till February when you're not doing that. <clears throat> okay, old business board candidate interview update. Thank Art you. and Julie. Julie, Art, do you want to? Yeah, I can just say that we, uh, we met and very pleased with uh, Beth. Beth, uh, no. uh, and uh, she looks very interested. You know, she sounds very interested. She participates here. She's volunteers here. She does other things. So, I mean, there's no doubt about it. But she's she was shooing. Oh, exactly. <laughs> What's Beth's yeah. last name? Bowles. I like the B O W O E S. Yep. Very concerning, very, like I said, she wants to be a, become more active. So when does the city bless her or whatever they do? So on Saturday, they have virtual uh, interviews the council does with uh, the various board, boards. And then on December 20th, they'll make uh, appointments to take, to start in January. Perfect. Thank you. Open house recap. You probably know the most pulled together. Well, I believe Dave pulled together all of yeah. the, yeah. <laughs> all of the data here. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I know that you had some disappointment about only having 60 something responses, but that's actually a pretty good response rate for having had 360 people mm -hmm. there. What is the percentage? That is what about 20% was it? Uh, Thereabouts. Is this the Results of the, so the open uh, house. Yeah. Oh, okay. the, and by where is that? Where is that available? Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I yeah, wonder yeah, where yeah. it was available. I didn't hear it. Where where uh, is that report available? It should have been emailed yeah. to everybody yeah. on the board. Here, here's a hard copy for you. David, is it because the usually thing for things to be valid, it's usually thirty to thirty-five percent. Is, is that correct? Well, the thing that upset me, I guess, is that we had a, we had a captured audience. I mean, we got twenty. You know, and we, we tried, tried to threaten them that we needed answers before they left. That's I mean, right. We did threaten them. That, that didn't work. <laughs> well, I think you know, I'm sorry. Twenty percent for a male survey would be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we yeah, have them right there. You know, so. yeah. But still, you know, still we, we we have quite a few folks. I just passed out an overall summary, and I sent the whole thing. To uh, I, I went through and I I, I um, listed all of the individual responses and then I tried my question Take one. and then I tried to uh, summarize it which was not easy because they're all over the so map you, you know but yeah. anyway uh, it didn't seem to fall in in groups and that's that's an overall summary there we've got you got them okay 
if anybody wants the whole list, you know, I've got the whole thing right here if you want it. <laughs> so, but I didn't think anybody would. No. So I don't think so I just, uh, your compiled list was very good. Yeah. yeah, they did. yeah. Well, then I took the summary of the summary, <laughs> and, and that's what you have in front of you there. And I think the thing that's really stood out is the exercise. People love the exercise, and I don't know. Maybe this is you know this is stuff you all know. I think, but I, the main thing I found from the survey is I've kind of confirmed. I think. The fact that they see that you're offering the right services, the like yeah. the services, and uh, an affirmation, if you will, from this. And it's partly the way we frame the questions, and so we got the kind of answers that we got. But anyway, it was all very positive. So fitness, walking, hiking, silver sneakers, yoga, all that stuff was often was mentioned twice as often as the next cluster, so to speak, which was the Go catalog. Everybody loves the Go catalog. I didn't see one critical remark of the go thing. A couple of people felt that they could, we could maybe do a better job of uh, using the newspapers, radio, TV. No, nobody said TV, but yeah. but basically everybody was pretty satisfied that they were getting information, and especially the go catalog. Um, travel. Uh, I interpreted that to mean people love to get out. You know, at our age, we, you know, you like to get out local trips, longer trips, all of that sort of thing. So that was very pop popular and, and I should say frequently mentioned. Then to a lesser extent, uh, painting, crafts, music, all of those kinds of things, counseling, mental health, are all important on a whole bunch of different issues. Um, they didn't mention a whole lot of uh, issues that I recall. They did mention you know, peer support, counseling, going to people and talk to them about different things in confidence. And then the last thing was, uh, uh, our, I recall you wanted this question uh, regarding frequency of participation. Uh, 14 said uh, rarely, never, 12 occasionally, four. You know, so there's quite, a, it was quite a bit of uh, uh, participation, I thought, given the, the 68 responses. So to kind of summarize all of that, uh, it was a, a pretty positive ex exercise, I think, in terms of the feedback. What I had in mind for the feedback was new stuff. Uh, but we didn't really get any new information, I don't think, just an affirmation of, of what we had. Now, uh, you push my button, so I'm going to keep going. <clears throat> uh, I was looking through the. <laughs> I'm going to push the off button. <laughs> I was looking through the, the annual report. I thought this was kind of interesting. Maybe I'm talking more about this than you really want to, but uh, in the annual report, I went through the areas of concern reported and compared it against what we had in the survey. And there were uh, a number of individuals, correct me if I'm wrong here, but there, there were 1,139 individuals listed as people uh, in your service volume for last year. Mm -hmm. For a resource specialist. Right? Referred to specialists. Yes. And the kinds of things that they uh, talked about were primarily financial. Over half of the responses, the concerns were in the financial area. And then there's also housing, caregiving were the next big ones. Well, financial concerns were not the kinds of things that were mentioned in that survey. And again, I think that's a function of, of, where, of how we ask the questions to some extent. Because they're asking what we asked them what they thought about the center and what we could do, and this is more what are the things that bother you? Is that about right? So uh, I thought it was a little bit different. I, I think it's also unlikely that people would write on a form they're handing to a stranger that they have concerns about their finances. It's a pretty vulnerable thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm wondering is it their finances, the finances. Uh, the ability to pay here? It, it, is it both? What What's being referred to in the annual report is people who need financial assistance with basic needs. Oh, so okay. housing, okay. food, medical sure. bills. Sure. Yeah. Resource issues. Yeah, resource okay. issues. But it, it makes sense to me that they wouldn't write that on the survey. Yeah. Right. That's a, which, it's a tender thing. Which, which tells me, I don't know if we want to do this again next year. But if we do, I think I would want to approach it a little bit differently. And I think uh, I think some of you felt the same way that maybe we might want to do it a little bit differently next year. 
And uh, uh, again, that's if, if we have an open house and if we do this. But I, uh, maybe more of an in-depth interview with a smaller number, you know, something like that. Focus uh, group kind of thing. Yeah, focus group, you know, I don't know. Uh, maybe take a different look. Yeah. You know, one of the things I noticed, first of all, in almost four years that I've been a part of these, uh, I've never seen that many people come. And it made my heart sing. And I also was greeting at the door, so I'm aware that a lot of people were walking in the door for the first time. And people that are coming for the first time don't feel as comfortable doing those kinds of surveys because they don't know about it. The other thing is there were so many people coming, especially towards the end of the hours, that they wanted to get back into the room where all the resource tables were. Mm -hmm. And so I think that had something to do with it. And if we're going to have that kind of um, questionnaire, it may be <laughs> that that particular kind of open house experience might not be the place to do it. I mean, we have access to a lot of people, but not everybody is going to have the information or experience that we're looking at. Um, but I, I was amazed. <laughs> I really was amazed at the numbers. People were really engaged. They yeah. were. One of the things that I think could be interesting is maybe once a month we have somebody out there doing a survey of all the people who are coming in and using the facility. Yeah. Um, because you might get more of a response around who, um, what other um, activities that they would like to see here, you know, offered here at the, the center. And I like to go to senior home, you know, senior housing places and go to them to get information about what they want because that may do two things. It may bring them here. <laughs> And we also may have uh, a place to gather information yeah. where they're feeling relaxed and have more time yeah, to maybe that's where spend we do a with focus us. Group. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'd like to nice do in that. Those areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's a really so, good idea. What about if you utilized your instructors and the last five minutes of a certain class on a certain day, you asked them the people to fill out the. Uh, some sort of a survey because there are people who participate in the class at the moment, and so they may have good input as to what else they'd like or how they'd like to do it. I, if I can share some information, we have resource specialists at housing sites constantly and long, long in communication with residents at housing sites. We also do go do kind of a mini get appointed at housing sites when they ask, which is sporadic since the pandemic that used to happen more regularly beforehand. So those connections are in place to be having that communication already, I would say. Um, Survey-wise, we've never done frequent surveys, I think because of probably the man time to go through them afterwards. But um, Michelle had, I would say, at least every few years putting together a really large survey here in the past that was open for at least a month and people could just sort of continually give feedback. So we can look yeah. at mechanisms around surveying. Yeah, I mean, it could be interesting if we did something monthly where, you know, we have how many people on the board, you know, maybe it's a board member who comes in and spends, you know, half a day interviewing people or doing surveys and then, you know, collating and. So do we have a, uh, I have two questions. Do we have a, de uh, two, one question and a comment. Do we have a demographic breakdown? Oh. Okay, because that would be helpful. Because when I think of resources, okay, there may be a gap between people who are 80 plus um, and people who are younger and have worked and have worked. You know, I'd love to do something like that, but I think I asked you that once before about demographics. And it seems to me that you were reluctant to ask that kind of information. What? No. No. 
on us I think we haven't asked that necessarily on the surveys, but we have demographic information from our resource system. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Because that's okay. great. But you can't relate it back to a to a response. No. Could you? Oh, no. 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 Yeah. Not a particular response, no. My other comment is that um, you know, people who are going to classes um, you know, they go to the class, they may have like 17 other things that they want to do. Um, what I've seen is that there's an iPad set up, and before they leave the class, they answer, it's very easy, three quick questions, so that, or four quick questions, or five quick questions. So you have an iPad on the stand, and you know, you ask whatever five questions you want or three questions you want, and they can just press and leave. So that it is, first of all, it'll put together your statistics to begin with. We have new iPad, I'm president of Friends of Long Island Library. We have brand new iPads um, that were really cheap, I have to tell you. <laughs> um, we have a good trade room. And what it gives us is ongoing information during the book sale. So we can press how many people, some people still write checks, some folks have cash, but we're moving people to the credit card because we can tap now. And we can see automatically how much cash, like within minutes. So it could be you want to set up a few iPads at the end of a class and have people just press your three to five questions. And one of them can be an age question. 64 to 72, 72, 73 to 82. Um, so that's one way to do it. And it will take a lot less time um, in terms of compiling, compiling data. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can tell you, we bought, I think, three or four iPads that are connected to Quicken. Um, and I think they were like 800 bucks. I mean, it was cheap. 800 each or? No, total. total. <laughs> um, you ordered them from Denver. Um, <laughs> so I think you can, you can get your information without having so much manpower. Mm -hmm. Ruth. I, I, oh, I, Sheila I, first. Oh, Sheila first. Okay, I, yeah, I, I agree. Um, two things. With any sort of survey or data collection, you only get response from the people who want to answer questions. Even you know, what saying, yes, this is my age. People, especially older people like myself, we don't want to tell everybody our age. Um, the other thing is, I can see that collecting that information after each class, you're going to get duplicates, duplicates. because somebody's going to come in for a yoga class and then tomorrow they're going to play billiards and then the next day they're doing a balanced class. So, you know, you, you get three responses. What does that mean? Um, right. right. It's confusing. To the same person. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, but I think getting demographic, sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. Getting democratic, <laughs> not democratic information, <laughs> democratic <laughs> information. Is, is really important because as I think when um, we went out to look at uh, senior housing, we had one right. person um, in her 50s, one in her 60s, the 60s. and one in, not in her 70s, right. which, which is a, a, a big range. Um, and we had, we, the senior center needs to accommodate all of those ages. That's my two cents worth on demographics. And a really good job, David. Ruth? Well, I'll be the devil's advocate, but I think we have to be careful doing surveys because people are asked to do surveys for every little single thing they do in their life. Um, you go to the polls and you're supposed to do this. And you go to yeah. Amazon delivers and you're supposed to do this. So I think we need to be careful. I agree. You know, I've, every time I buy something, I get, you know, from Lowe's, Lowe's I get a survey. You know, I, I haven't made a survey Spam. for months and months. <laughs> you know, I like, I, I like your ideas about maybe updating this. And uh, if we do it again, I think we could uh, 
certainly make use of more sophisticated approaches. Oh, yeah. And we'll spend a little bit more time analyzing just what it is that we're after. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would take a little more time. But uh, if we want to do it, I think that would be, this is just a kind of an initial plunge. Right, so right. To speak. Yeah, because up front you may have to spend yeah. time. Mm -hmm. and, but then you may not have to spend as much time compiling. Right. So, right. It, you know, I'm done. Okay, I was just going to say, you know, I, I think everything went well. I mean, I, I think we did. Well, like I said, I think it went well. I think the, the uh, greeting of the people when they came in, I think they felt so good. Very welcoming and things like this. Uh, I, I agree with two or three questions maybe next time. And even if we don't get the, the uh, what do you call it? iPad. Yeah, the iPads or whatever. Even if we give us maybe a half a page of it, with with two questions and then put a box right there you know maybe put a table and ask them if they would like to sit down and just kind of fill that out and put it in that box rather than giving it back to us uh you know might be a, a better thing uh the one thing i, I do uh and, and i don't have an answer for it but i i just didn't i just feel like uh at that particular function we didn't get a lot of hispanic uh, population to show up i had one monolingual Spanish-speaking person that, that came in and I talked to them for a while. But as far as, I guess the more I think about it is that even for that one, I, it would have been nice to go and walk around with them because right. if there's not a Spanish-speaking person at one of the, 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 the uh, what do you call them, the booths, uh, you know, it's kind of hard for them. But that that's one of the concerns. And, and like I said, I don't have the answer for it. but. Uh, well, I think That's part of answer. part of the answer is that we're hiring a three quarter time <coughs> recreation coordinator next year who's bilingual and bicultural, oh, and a big part yeah. of that work is going to be outreach. Mm -hmm. Good. That's real good. Yeah. Yeah, real glad to hear. Oh, um, um, just a, a comment that um, uh, on on what uh, Art said. Um, I had a, a really memorable conversation with a person of color, a, a black person, um, about why there was not more participation on uh, the city boards by persons of color. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, we actually made some outreach effort um, to recruit a better balance and she said, well, the problem is, for me, is that I don't want to be the only right. exactly. person of color and that you should recruit in pairs. Um, mm -hmm. I which I, which I, you know, and I found that to be, uh, I guess, kind of an unreasonable expectation in some ways because it's, it's, it's a quota system, you know, which is kind of something that we don't do. But when I came... The lessons that I took away from it that um, that I, I think speaks to what Art said is is that for a time at least we should do direct outreach to the Spanish speaking community, direct outreach, um, you know, maybe to some of the churches that have, you know it's, it's hard to to we black people in, in Longmont are just scattered. But there are churches, there are places to recruit, and I wonder if, if some direct outreach might make people feel more welcome by being invited. It's something to consider. Um, I think that uh, it's okay to do pairs. It's not a quota, but if you come into a room and you are the only black person in the room, it is so off-putting. It is incredible. So I think pairing two black people is perfectly fine. It's not about a quota. It's about reflecting what you what you want. It's leveraging um, their gifts to do specific outreach. So I don't have a problem putting two black people, two Hispanic people, two gay people, you know, whatever you want to say together, because people want to see um, themselves reflected. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's a very, very important thing when a white person comes up to a black person and will, if, or if you're Hispanic, but if you come up to a black person and if one black person say, join our committee and all of us look like us, I don't think that's a successful recruitment tool. <laughs> So, I can accept that, yeah, and yeah. yeah, I don't know, and I suspect having with your professional background, Prudence, that, that you may know more, because I don't know really what defines a quota or not, and what yeah. is appropriate yeah. for us to do. Um, so yeah, that's a perfectly yeah. good point. I mean, in on this board, it, it, for example, I mean, we've sort of segued away from um, the subject of participation in, in the open house, um, but this board has a large enough membership that it might be possible um, you know, to, to at least look at pairing, because um, you know, I mean, I've lived in communities where I was the ethnic minority, and right. it is weird, you know, you walk in and everybody doesn't look like you. Right, it's um, not comfortable, um, and especially not comfortable with people of color, because it's been ingrained in them ingrained in many, many people, that they will be the only one. And that's one more thing. One, one final comment is on this is that, you know, as far as the Hispanics, uh, Spanish speaking, etc., the one thing I do know is there's a lot of them that come in for service, you know, mm -hmm. need help with this letter, need help with this or that. And I, uh, I'm sure they're doing it, but if not, uh, hopefully our, uh, Outreach people are uh, not the outreach, but what do you call them? Resource staff. Yeah. The, the ones we'll meet with Veronica and some of you know, give out a, a, a gold magazine, uh, talk to them a little bit also about them participating a little bit more. And well, they do. Like that. And I'm sure they are. <laughs> and we, we started this year making a monthly Spanish flyer of all the Spanish programming in particular. Yeah. Um, so that the resource specialist can just hand that to people too in the front desk. Monica at the front desk helps make that. Okay. I, I will say about open house, I'm gonna take the notes and put them into our tracking document. Um, the staff have had a debrief about open house and we think every two to three years is probably yeah. the sweet spot for open houses that annually we would get dwindling numbers pretty quick. Um, but so we're tracking because it may be two years before we have another one, we're, we're keeping track of all the ideas. And can I, I just say something? I wasn't able to attend, and I haven't been out of state with a good excuse. Mm -hmm. It was. Mm -hmm. It sounded so successful. I would love to have been a part of it. So I think well done to everybody else who, who participated, and particularly to David with your uh, with your survey. I think it's great. Moving on to Jeff, so senior services manager position update. So we have. You didn't bring the champagne. <laughs> <laughs> so Ronnie Manus, some of that of you met him during the interview process, has accepted the position. His first day will be January 9th, and uh, Ronnie brings a vast amount of experience in administration, customer service and uh, I would say problem solving. And uh, I think he's gonna do a very good job and I can't wait for him to get here. So. I have a quick question. Are both of you gonna be involved in training? How's this gonna work? It's, I mean, a, it's a secret, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't give out information. <laughs> yes, Brandy, I, and Christina Pacheco will be in that process. Um, we are currently working on um, his onboarding process and and uh, actual schedule for him for that first week and uh, inundating him with all the information, hoping that he comes back for week two. <laughs> so will some of the responsibilities be split differently than they were in prior to June? Uh, a little bit, yes. Yeah. So that he can breathe? Yeah, and I'm not going anywhere, so I will be still coming to the board meetings and the friends meeting for a period of time until Ronnie feels comfortable. Also, we uh, finished the uh, first uh, round of uh, interviews for the Director of Human Services, 
which senior services will be a part of. And I'm hoping uh, that that new director will be in place uh, sometime in January as well. So there'll be a lot of support uh, for Ronnie and, and staff here at the Senior Center. So his last name is spelled M-A-N-U-S? M-A-N, or excuse me, M-A-Y-N-E-S. And it's pronounced Manus. What's his background? Is, is he has uh, been uh, in the education system. That's what you're asking? Yeah, and uh, been uh, an administrator at uh, multiple uh, schools as a, an assistant principal and uh, athletic director and feel like the skill set he brings is going to really work well with any age group. And, and uh, once you get to meet Ronnie, he just has this personality that sucks you right in. And, and I mean that as a great thing. I think uh, he's going to bring some some real good things to, to all of us and uh, really, really pleased that he accepted. May I, I just say something? I love the idea of having the male minority as the leader of the senior set. <laughs> Um, and we do have two males on the board, but um, that's not enough. I think we need to get more of a, a male influence. Influence is probably the wrong word. Input right. into what we offer. So I'm looking forward to that. She's not saying so there's anything nice. wrong with all the females in there. Yes. <laughs> I'm yeah. to my balance class. I'm late to <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't want to say that. I just the energy this young man has was just unbelievable, mm -hmm. and that was so you know he uh, said he he's been there with more with the youth than he has it oh but you know I feel so comfortable with the staff that we have here that he's going to fit right in and they're going to help him mm -hmm. in getting to where he needs to be. So he's uh, I mean I, I met him on the on the, on the parking lot when we were leaving and. You know, again, he emphasized how he really wanted this position, mm -hmm. and he really thinks this was is a good fit for him. And so, I just see that he's going to fit right in. Yeah. So, is his real name? I have to ask this because my name is previous. Is his real name Ronnie? How do you spell that? R O N N I E. I have, oh, okay. have not seen it written any other, any other way. Okay. How was he recruited? Well, through the city process, we had. Um, put out uh, things initially um, through Indeed and some of those uh, processes as well as um, individual reach outs to, to different uh, senior centers in the area and then also on the uh, Colorado Parks and Recreation Association uh, website. And did both of those two different times because the, the first round was I'll just say pretty disappointing. The second round, uh, Lori, who was our first candidate, and ended up turning down the position. And Ronnie found uh, their applications the first way. Ronnie's application just came in way, way later. Yeah. Okay, trip registration update. I handed out 97 numbers for people that came to sign up for trips. It was a snowy day and I was afraid we weren't going to get a lot of people and I was really surprised at how many people still came out for trip registration. And it seemed like it went really smoothly. Uh, it was Jamie Beckett, our uh, recreation supervisor's first trip registration and I think she learned a lot. Um, I don't know if you had any other feedback, Jeff. No. Are, are there waiting lists on some of the trips? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Again, a good assortment of things to choose from. Yes, and I've heard Jamie and Char talking to bus companies and doing their normal process of, okay, we have a wait list. Is there a way we can create a second leg of this trip? They are so good at jumping right on that. Yeah. In some cases, they're not able to get right. those logistics together. There's not enough tickets, there's not any options, but when they can, they do. And then the restaurants that decide not to be open on Tuesdays that are already in the catalog, and yep. they find an alternate. Yeah. Oops. Update on library recreation culture tax proposal. 
Marsha, you want to talk about this? Yes. Okay. Um, this is uh, um, uh, classic economics. You know, we have we have uh, limited resources and uh, many needs. So, um, uh, if, if if to quickly recap the um, the situation, we have one really oversubscribed recreation center in Longmont, um, uh, a proper allocation of resources for a city this size would put one in each ward. Um, so, you know, we've got a third of what we ought to have, or if you count the memorial building facility about, you know, which you really, <laughs> you're right, Prudence, I don't either. Right. Um, I, know. <laughs> I know, Susan agrees. <laughs> no, I go to that class too. Yeah. Um, but the, the library, it's about 60% of what it ought to be, and that would be for, go, you know, going for dead average. Um, and then um, I have uh, really strong feelings myself personally about uh, uh, accessibility of, of other cultural um, issues uh, or features experiences um, and I find that uh, to be a, a, a real that lack to be a real social equity option uh, for us honestly as well as as for our youth which is my main concern um, because you know people in their prime working year uh, years um, who are uh, well, persons of privilege, you know, at least middle class, don't have any trouble accessing uh, things in the, in the greater area. But if you are a child whose parents have to work an excessive amount just to make ends meet, they aren't going to have the resources or energy to get you involved in things like um, performance class music, um, different genres, you know, it's going to be just be whatever's around in your neighborhood. Um, and uh, it's the same for, for older people mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, driving to Mackey Auditorium and parking, driving to the Denver, Se Denver Center for Performing Arts, driving to Fiddler's Green, those are in incredibly inaccessible barriers insurmountable barriers so I I, uh, I I really I feel like I personally am fighting to keep that on the list um, of, of funded um, issues and I shouldn't uh, you know all of these things are are really important and, and branch libraries are I think uh, important for the same reason you know because not only is our facility inadequate but it's in, in the center of town and we have an edge and we have whole neighborhoods where transit service is inadequate and it doesn't even touch them. So yeah, we have, we have many needs. It would be a quarter of a billion dollars to just haul off and do everything we think needs to be done. And that is just seeding the capital campaign for the Center for Performing Arts. Um, and you know doesn't fully fund the building of it, so um, it, it's it's a, a terrible um, dilemma, and I want to raise the issue as well that there seems to be a a some kind of a public backlash against economic development against growth. I don't understand it myself because, you know, to me as an insider, it seems like it's being done very thoughtfully and, um, you know, with an eye toward um, building a more accessible, more equitable, and richer in in the experiential sense city. But you know, that's an insider viewpoint, and I think that to get anything 
you know, even if it's a third of what this asks for, um, to get any of it to pass um, is, is really going to be an uphill battle. Um, if, if anyone has ideas about, um, you know, approaches um, or communications, you know, that would, would change the way people feel about things, um, I would love to hear it. I don't know, Jeff or, or, or Susan, whether we have time on the agenda or not, but um, if not, maybe we can schedule it for soon, because this is, you know, we've got uh, almost a full year before things hit the ballot again. Uh, but um, uh, to me, it seems like one of the most important things we're doing, but also uh, one of the most difficult things. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, you know, thank you for bringing that up. I think that part of the issue is um, it lies on the sense of communication. So I think that uh, I, communicating about the hotel, I think, has been really poorly managed by the city. And I think that what you hear, even from people who don't even read the Long Mile Times call, they say, wait a second, there are plenty of developers in Colorado. That's the first thing. And why are you giving a company who is out of state, in which most of the revenue will flow to, um, money? So I think that that communication piece is really the issue. It's similar to the swimming pool in my mind, is that there is there's not a united effort by the council. They can vote on things, but there's not a united communication effort within their communities or wards to have people understand why you're giving their money to someone from Mississippi, I think it is. <laughs> um, so I think that the communication is just really lacking and I would recommend, not even suggest, that you hire someone from the outside to do the city's communications. There are plenty of talented people out there who run, run communication businesses and that that would be key in helping, assist, not helping, but assisting the public to understand um, what is being done. So. I don't fault the issues. I fault the communication of, of the issues. So I think that that's part, that's the biggest part of the problem. <laughs> that people don't support, as you say, all these initiatives because it's communicated so poorly. Um, I, I am on both sides of that issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on the one hand, I feel like there is always a first time when everybody hears about something, and regardless of how gradually or how suddenly or you know the way it's introduced, my observation is that the initial reaction is universally no, which is kind of terrifying. Um, and. Uh, so, so that is one thing. Another thing is, is uh, you know, again on the hmm, that's what you say side of it. You know, is is that um, we have these uh, I'll call them memes, you know, that get started and are absolutely, um, you know. Yeah. Uh, insurmountable you know you just once somebody says this it becomes true and the fact that it is demonstrably false it, it, you can you can talk your ear off um, you know I've had personal conversations with people about the um, the actual funding model for this hotel and uh, which involves um, uh, no city money 
unless you count the value of the parking lot, which was not a, ref, a, a revenue generating thing. Um, and um, I don't know how, you know, this is a group that will not accept this because we are not going to change our habits away from automobile driving, you know, it's the, it's the Gen Xers and the Millennials and et cetera that are going to drive less. It's not going to be us. But personal car ownership is not a sustainable practice and the city planners with a 50 year horizon are acknowledging that. And what that means is that, that ugly asphalt parking lots in particular are doomed anyway. It's been in the DDA plan as long as I've been associated with them to repurpose the flat ugly style of parking and incorporate it into into um, you know buildings like the spoke or the hotel you know which has hidden interior parking that can later be repurposed um, but that is just what responsible city planners are doing um, the other thing is you know um, the only money only city money that would ever go into this is rebates on future taxes and specifically the taxes that are generated by the hotel itself. So none of your money, none of your money, unless you decide you like living in that hotel and spend a lot of time there <laughs> and pay lodgers taxes, then it's your money going to fund it, otherwise not. And, and I can explain that painstakingly and you know, the, the person I'm talking to will come back and say, we could be spending it on the library instead. Well, no, we couldn't because we don't if, have it. if the hotel doesn't, do, doesn't generate that revenue, it won't exist. Um, and uh, so, you know, all of those things are, are on the side of, of, you know, what are we going to do? As is the fact that the downtown master plan is publicly available. You can download it from the DDA website and the city website, and it's really easy to find, unlike almost every else on the city website. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, 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 and it's been on the master plan, that hotel in that location for 20 years, and uh, the concept of a hotel for almost 40 years. So, this is the first time I've heard about it, means that the public is not taking any responsibility for the city until they see the headline. So that's why you need a, a communications, communications expert. Okay, so I can tell you yes. right now that what's going on um, in, at my synagogue, they own five to six acres of land. There's, there's two or three buildings on that land, okay? They're going to hopefully change that and move to the JCC campus. It'll take a year, and they have hired a communication specialist, have held focus groups. So I really believe that the communication from the city is so poor that they rely on the newspaper and gossip, uh, you know, mm -hmm. to get their message across and one to one. Has there been focus groups? And people say, well, you know, it's been there for 20 years. Well, when I hear that, I mean, that's a no vote for me if it took you 20 years. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of the other thing. But I think you must understand that, that, that people want to be communicated to by not a politician, but by a, to formulate, to form your message. I think the messaging is just really poor. But there, there hasn't been a message yet about the library because we've been developing information to present to council. Once council, we had the meeting on the 29th. Then the next step is to go out and get do the focus groups, do the surveying, take input. You need, you can't do it. You need a focus. You need a communication specialist, and but no the city one has those. That's the problem. <laughs> I agree communication should be better. The thing is with the if the good people of Longmont hear that 
the city has spent a quarter of a million dollars on hiring professional communicators. You don't have to pay that. Now that just opens up another can of worms. And can you imagine what next door would say to that? Which is where most of the miscommunication oh, comes right. from. Oh, it's about 50-50 with Facebook, but yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I should look at Facebook. Sorry. Can I suggest that if people think about this and have ideas to help Marsha present mm -hmm. this, you can email Marsha directly and maybe, you know, edit on old business the next time we meet to talk about it. I think that's a good idea. I would ex appreciate that extremely. <coughs> there is one more thing that I would like everybody to know as they think about it, and also as you talk to the people you associate with in everyday life. This is actually not a city action. So the way the hotel came about it's, it's a business development action by an agency charged with business development. And some of the steps in it, it had to come to the council for approval, period. So, you know, the council did not get the option of engaging in advanced communication with this. And, and that's, um, I think, here we have a communication problem um, that I, I, I try to, um, you know, to have. People don't know what the council does or the limits of its authority. And they don't know, um, you know, they think, they think that we should be able to vote on everything. Well, you know, if, right. if this hotel is the scale that triggers a vote, for example, we'd be voting every week. And the cost of that would fund a homeless shelter. Or oh, the library. <laughs> I just have a question because sure. somehow I, my brain got a little bit confused. Uh -huh. Because I see the hotel as being a whole different issue than a library and a right. civic right. center and right. a rec center. Mm -hmm. That are things that really are related to, you know, what the city might be asking to tax us, where the hotel is a whole, to me, it's apples and oranges. It and is apples and oranges. If you want to provide feedback, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have feedback about hotels mm -hmm. after what happened to my neighborhood in the last eight years. But I have a lot of ideas about how to approach people who we're going to ask for tax money from in today's world mm -hmm. to fund a new library or library extensions. Mm -hmm. So is that the feedback you're, you're asking us to give you? Um, yes, I mean, because you are absolutely right, other, other than, than uh, approving an action by the General Improvement District um, and, a, and a rebate of future taxes, the council had nothing to do with the hotel. Right. Um, but, um, uh, but yes, what the, the main purpose is, is, is bringing something to the ballot that will pass um, because People don't know it, but they're cutting off their nose to spite their face. I, you know, I think uh, I have heard, and Prudence, this will sing to you, I have gotten so many calls and letters that say, our library's fine. We don't when was the last them. time you were there? <laughs> <laughs> and how old are you? <laughs> it is that demographic piece. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean that that's that's true. What you know, once your kids are old enough that their that their library, their school library is their main library resource source. Until you are retired, how much do you go to the library? I read everything on my Kindle, and I'm happy to pay for it for the convenience. So. You know, there there is a, a, a large decision-making population that is not critical of the library. Um, yeah, so it, it's really, um, 
as as Prudence says, it's 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 a huge communication battle. And yes, we are talking, Janine, about the the monster ask that is coming up. And and first of all, it's not going to be a single ballot measure um, for a quarter of a billion dollars um, because there are log rolling laws and the, the things are not closely related enough to um, all be on a single uh, ballot measure anyway. So uh, it's a terrible conundrum. What's right? the priority? Well, everybody has different priorities. <laughs> and, and everyone will be glad to hear that the city is, is embarking on a program of outreach and asking everybody what their priorities are um, that that will last all summer because we don't have to refer the ballot issues until this August or maybe next August yes so it will be like one issue is the library recreation it'll be like four issues we don't know how we'll stack it up. Okay. So, but so, it won't be one, is what Marcia yeah, said. Yeah, it, it okay. won't be right, one. Right, it right. can't be one. So I have been advised legally that one could um, define a a uh, law month public information or you know public experience complex that is essentially a library that happens to have a theater in it. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it's not unheard of. And uh, so, you know, those two might be rolled up together, especially since, you know, the, the performing arts has only got $50 um, million, at, only $50 million allocated to it, whatever the library number is bigger than that. Um, and I can't answer that question for another reason, which is that there's something that the city has no control over, um, we won't know until August um, whether there will be a library district initiative on the ballot because it takes a minuscule number of signatures and no money to get that to happen. 100 signatures? Yes. Oh, great. Well, I think um, the whole role of libraries has changed so much. I mean, it used to yeah. be you go get a book, check it out. But now they have so many programs for I just know English someone who went to the Denver Gala. Yeah, I things through the library. 250,000 square feet yeah. as a space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just <laughs> and, you know, they, they do put out what happens every month, but do people read it? No. That's so you know, communication. But yeah. You, you, know, you teach your children, or do our children teach our children these days? about libraries. You know, when I was a kid, it, it was an intricate part. It of looks life. like it if you go there. It, it, <laughs> it really was, but unless parents or schools teach their children about all the magic in a library, that's another generation coming up. So, you know, perhaps that's why they spend more time on their, on their computer and on their phone than they do in a library, but that's all a part of the discussion. That's right, right. and the distinction right. between the two is, is, is blurring, you know, in, in, in first and second grade, we had actual lessons about how to use card catalog. Yeah. and what the Dewey Decimal <laughs> System was. Um, because you were helpless. You, you had no access to information if you do, couldn't do those <laughs> things. I know that. had trips to the library from their school. Well, yes. I, will, I will tell you, I was ta taught all of that, you know, mm -hmm. 55, and I was taught all of that. I think one of the issues with the library is that if you take the a general chunk of the middle class, they're not interested in going to the library. They right. can get it on their whatever device right. it is that they've been blessed with because they're privileged, right? So you've got this middle class, upper class, and then you're looking at seniors, right, that have a are living, people who are retired, let's put it that way, on a living on a, a, a fixed income, and then you have a community of people who are in, you know, at, at, at lower in economic levels those are the people that are most interested in going to the library because those are the people 
that's where they can get the information. They can get access to a computer so that they can get online, all of those things. And it seems like the people who are in this middle class, you know, upper middle class area that don't have an interest in having their taxes going to that, right, don't understand that it it is to, to lift up the other part of the community that doesn't have this privilege, right? But there's a lot of people that are in that income level that just really don't feel like their their money needs to go to those services, right? And so I think that's what it's, I think that's the battle, mm -hmm. right? It, and, and yes, I think it is communication, but that's our biggest battle, is that right. those people who feel like they don't need the library will always go against it, unless they're civically minded and they are interested in lifting other communities. Yes, and civic mindedness is somehow languishing in yeah. our current era. Yeah. Um, so Susan, we were going to cut this debate off and put it on a future agenda, and it kind of didn't happen because everybody has something to say, so I apologize. <laughs> Um, I, I would like to also point out, if because I'm sure the agenda is already crowded, uh, another thing that I would be willing to do is engage Sandy or Marika and um, run a focus group soon, you know, like before the next meeting even. So if there is interest in that, you can go to Susan, you can go to me. Um, uh, if there's if there's interest, I believe that I can get it together, and it would sort of be a proto focus group because uh, you know how it would inform you know the more the more planned uh, kind of work that will happen in the spring. So Sounds good. Uh, yeah, put that on the minutes if you would, and, and I can be correct. Hey, Boulder did it. They got their library money. They did. We could and do they they got, yeah. We could do the We can do the magic, you know, motion. Yeah, fifty yeah. percent. Yep. One quick one. One quick one. Um, I was. I spent probably two, if not three, hours very recently in the Orlando Public Library, oh. and it's it's amazing. It's. I thought to myself, this is sort of a combination of library, Tinker Mill, Longmont Public Media, babysitting services, mm -hmm. and it was so impressive. And if you have the chance or the inclination to look at um, the website that describes it, I think it will open up some ideas about what we as a small community can do with those sorts of services. It is, it is amazing. And everybody I talk to there, loved working there, and was so pleased to have somebody that had interest in it. You know, that's something that hasn't been discussed, but the way our Civic Center and our makerspaces are, uh, are org well, they're separate, but they're also org located such uh, that we'd have a shared childcare, you know, mm -hmm. drop in for up to two hours or something, and you have to have a cell phone <laughs> so we can find the parents. But um, you can pay your bills, you can go to the adult version of the library, you can go to Longmont Public Media, um, you know, you can do all of those things downtown. Um, and it would encourage participation. Yeah. You don't have to go as far as Orlando. Uh, all you have to do is go to the Loveland Library, okay, which is about 15, 20 minutes from here. And you will see a library that is very similar, and also the Denver Public Library. Yeah. So if you just take your little car and go 15, 20 minutes from here to Loveland, you will see a spectacular library. I, I know the okay. focus of this Moving discussion has been library. <laughs> Can we tie this back to the Senior Center just briefly? Yeah, go ahead, Brandy. I, I believe the plan with this tax proposal is that we would build Senior Center right. space into right. the Recreation Center. Is that still the plan, Jeff? Yes. So I, I want to make sure we then. at least note that. Yes. It would not be a full Senior Center, but it would have programming space at that location. And that would not eliminate this location. Oh, no, no, no. It would be in addition. Yeah. Somebody yeah. asked me about that because they were worried. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would like to move on to new business um, because this is my last 
meaning in this term here. I would like you guys to think about how we and what we're going to present for the 2022 annual report from our advisory board to the council, which is usually presented in the spring. Last year, I believe Sheila and Prudence pulled a report together in conjunction with Michelle. Yes. Yeah. We've, as a staff, have started talking about that and we'll have that on a, an agenda in January or February. Okay. There's a brief section that the board pulls together about what the board's work was and the rest of the report is really what the whole senior center's work was in the year so it's not a it's not a big lift but we do need some and information along with that you know we have discussed the registration process i wouldn't mind if you mentioned that in addition to the staff being overworked and the facilities being overstressed Looking at these. <laughs> what Just we did is that we went through the minutes of 2022 and then we pulled out the things and then we met with Michelle. Um, so I, I thought that what I, I personally thought that was the best thing to do was to look at the minutes and see what was accomplished and what is still hanging out there. Like the RFP for fifth care. Hate to bring that up. <laughs> I think that's coming off. Because that goes with the goals which have to be reviewed for 2023. And some of these goals have been hanging there forever. Right. So that's another thing on January. The goals should be updated. What where are the are goals? You, yeah, where are the goals? The Upcoming agenda items, page. is that what you're referring to? On the second to? page. The second page of the minutes. Oh, the minutes. Okay. Yeah, not on the agenda. Pursuant to that, if I could ask, seeing that Susan, the um, outgoing member, the reports on area agency on aging and the engaging care in communities. Susan will no longer be reporting on those. How do we get other board members to replace you? Not that you will replace them. Well, first off, before we jump into that, sorry, I won't I will be attending the Friends meeting on December 27th. Sheila cannot back me up. You'll have nobody reporting back to you unless somebody would like to attend with me. Can you can you write a report? <laughs> I guess I could highlight it. Yeah, I could send a little thing. Will you be there? Or or Brandy and I could make okay, that report. Okay, well that's fine. Right. Then I'll, you can report back. I'll be there. Good. Okay. okay, takes care of that. And in January, you have to elect a president, vice president, and secretary. So you will also appoint people that will be attending the various meetings and able to report back. And then I think it was last year, wasn't it? Well, people volunteered. Right. And then if right. it wasn't a volunteer, then, then we maybe then the twisted, president twisted could, some lines. Uh, to somebody, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will our new board member be on board um, at that meeting? For January? For January, yes. 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 Great. Yes. And then you'll have the odd number, but you still need to, you know, we have two vacancies. Hopefully in mid year, you can get somebody else to come on for nine. Okay. Yeah, so the process is the clerk's office will ask again. They usually do um, board applications in June and in the fall. And so we'll be back in that cycle again to get somebody, I believe it's for the July meeting. Mm -hmm. Is that so yeah. right, Marsha? Yeah, I think yeah, so. I think yeah. the other boards I've dealt with are all into the year, so this is kind of new for me. But I think it's July where we have the opportunity. We will. Um, if council still wants this to continue to do the interviews, I'll tell you that 
my experience has been, and Art and Julie, if, if you think different, please chime in, but I, I think that's been a great experience to at least be able to give council some feedback. Can I ask who's leading the board? You and me. Okay, that's what I thought. I didn't know whether anybody else was volunteering to lead. No, you don't volunteer to leave. You only volunteer to join. <laughs> well, that's not an are you both term limited or uh, or are you choosing not to seek a second? We're choosing not to seek a second term. Well, that's volunteers. <laughs> Jeff, I need to clarify this. So you say in June, people can go ahead and apply again and get the yes. and hopefully in July we'll have the the appointments will be made? Yes. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can actually apply. So there's a there's a window. It's clearly marked on the website, although uh, and there's a little piece in the in the paper paper, although I've never encountered it on the website. Um, you know, the uh, when the window opens for applying, um, because obviously you have to you know we have a recruiting period beforehand. Uh, that is not as well publicized as as it could be. Yeah. Um, Jeff, we got Chong interested in the minutes. Yep, I need her email. I have the email ready to well, go. I have have it. Yeah. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Yep, I have the email so, ready to go. I, I typed it up this morning, but I couldn't find the, her email. But okay. It can go out this afternoon. Okay, perfect. I thought I sent all of that stuff to her. Maybe she lost it. And the, the goals of the board um, listed in the, the back of the minutes, um, I'm assuming that responsibilities that Prudence and Susan have um, for some of these goals, will they be up for discussion? Right, January. January yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Supervisor's report? I have no other report uh, other than Ronnie starting, and then I will let everybody know that next week there will be some, uh, four of the furnaces in the building are going to be replaced, so there might be a little bit of noise and might be a little cooler in some area, but that all should be done within the week, and uh, then we'll be back out of here. Does that mean it's easier to regulate temperature? No. No. That's too much of a dream. Okay. <laughs> um, if I can report in, you know, Teresa Schulte has stayed on with us uh, to help train Jamie Beckett, our new relations supervisor. And Teresa will be retiring again soon. <laughs> so if, if so doesn't she have one more after this? Right? <laughs> if, if any of you, you know, are fond of Teresa, you just may want to touch base with her before the end of the year. So the end of the year is going to be it for her. I don't know that we have an official no, date, no, but but soon she is she is clear. She's really going to retire. <laughs> and she's still she'll still be on the Friends. Yes. Group, yeah. Though. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. She'll be she's like so me. Young. She'll be around. <laughs> young enough to go have fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought when I retired at sixty. <laughs> Anything else from the city council, Marsha? We pretty much covered. Well, you know, that's the, that's the big issue before us. Um, again, I, I should reiterate where we are, in fact, with the new LHA uh, organization and new people in both planning and, and human services uh, really having a revolution in terms of the ability to provide affordable housing. And uh, so... I'd like to brag about that a little bit. We now have a seven-person council again, having mm-hmm. having seated Sean McCoy last night. Um, uh, but uh, uh, you know, other than that, we um, there was an interesting discussion on on the um, the contents of the retreat, and I would like to ask you briefly. What if any of you have interest in attending all or part of the council retreat because it is a public meeting? Um, it's a two day long thing. Um, and Sheila goes, Oh, no, I 
her, but, um, but it is a public meeting. Um, and uh, the venue has yet to be decided, so if a lot of people express interest in attending, that might affect what the venue is. Um, you know, it's not a thing that you can hold in an auditorium. It's a round table, you know, um, kind of, of event with, a, a, I hope, a lot of free discussion. Um, but um, there will be some public invited to be heard on the agenda. We're um, planning a two-day event, so there might be two public invited to be heard segments. Um, so if anybody is in, is interested at that level, then... Um, when is that? Pardon me? When is that? We believe it is uh, February 11th and 12th. And where did you go last year? Um, there wasn't a retreat last year. Okay. It, was, uh, it was, the window of opportunity was almost closed by the time we sure. realized we would not have a seventh council member last year. Um, uh, so the, the last retreat was um, at, uh, One of the affordable housing venues on Hover, I can't remember the name of it. Um, and it was, uh, I would say there were a total of 40 people there. Mm -hmm. You know, there was the council, there were a lot of advisors from the staff um, and a number of, of attendees from the public who stuck it out for an amazingly long period of time, including Shakita Yarbrough, who was not on the council um, at that point, but, but was preparing, which I found pretty admirable of her uh, to do that. Uh, and it was entirely focused on the LHA, which is different from most council retreats. Um, uh, we did, you can, you can watch the discussion um, online, if you're interested in the discussion so about Zoom, content, will Zoom, be, Zoom will be available. I don't know. Uh, I I believe that that's a minutes only discussion. Um, uh, just you know, so people don't think that they're performing and don't have to behave formally and can scratch the noises and stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, sort of like this, although we are recording this, aren't we? And I see that red eye looking straight at me. Yeah. Next time I'm not going to get stuck for 20 minutes in the Starbucks line, um, which is why I was 20 minutes late. Um, but, um, but anyway, I, I will next time know more about what the agenda is going to be like. Is that something our manager attends? I don't know. It, only if there's a, an agenda topic. Okay. Our you could manager attend meaning the public. Jeff or our new manager. Our new manager. Um, and yeah, it's, well, I'll, we'll talk about the agenda next time. Let's move on to Janine and Area Agency on Aging. Anything for us? Uh, we met last Friday um, and did a large review of uh, area agency, area on agency issues and challenges in the mountain towns of Boulder County. And there are many, many, many in terms of getting services to people up in the mountains and how uh, we can more effectively serve people in those communities, uh, especially issues in and we, we've got food covered. <laughs> food can be delivered to people in the mountains, but services, like services that are offered here at the Senior Center, transportation, getting people up there, down here, especially to services in our Senior Center, um, as well as things like shoveling, get, getting people's driveways shoveled, which is non-existent up there, and becoming a major issue for the safety of older adults. So we really uh, address those issues. We reviewed some of the legislative priorities uh, that are coming up this next year. 
some of the things that I think um, uh, are good and interesting, if anyone's interested in participating, is they're planning on creating a board on affordable housing uh, for Boulder County, uh, wanting to expand right free transportation, um, wanting to uh, expand behavioral health uh, uh, that would be available, um, looking at a, a, a workforce of volunteers throughout the county, and of course, ongoing wildfire mitigation, especially for older adults uh, in high-risk communities. So that is a quick update. Great. Mandy. The Friends Board, they were able to seat three new board members, so they're, they've got what they need. Um, they are also talking about transferring their monies to the High Plains Bank without doing an RFP just because they've had a terrible experience dealing with their current banking, which is out of state, they don't know the people, that's all turned over. And then they are preparing for their big annual meeting in January. So fourth Tuesday of January, 3 to 4.30 is their annual meeting. Anybody who's given a dollar or more can attend. Can I ask you one question? Why, why do you think it is that the Friends got three board members? They don't have to go through the city process. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> if I can add, you know, staff did outreach to a variety of people for both boards, and they want. I don't see any logic to it, honestly. Just the there were more people who were interested in the friends board and making sure that the funding pieces are in place there. I, I personally talked to a number of people about the advisory board who were like, "This just is not. I don't have time in my life for adding anything else." Um, it wasn't because they didn't want to go through the city process. It, and they weren't interested in the advisory board. It just did not fit in their life. And one of the board members was tapped on the shoulder by Debbie Noble. She goes, how could I say no? And so there she is. She's well, I would also like to say, um, whenever anybody talks about this board, um, we always say how engaged it is, how effective it is in terms of having its tentacles in every process around the around aging and older adults in the entire Boulder County. And some people really admire y'all, but they, they also know how much work it is to be on this board. If they know the same thing about trip escorts. I've heard that too. I'm like, come on people, snap <laughs> out of it. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, before you move on, what date is their um, annual meeting? The fourth of January, the fourth Tuesday in January. It is January twenty fourth. Right. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. And you said what times? Three. Three o'clock. Mm -hmm. You usually get an email about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you've contributed, you yeah. get a notification. So, anything from the Latino Coalition Art? Uh, no, I I just have to say that I really brought this up several times at the board at the, about the board member trying to get it down. And the same people that are on that board yeah. are the same ones that are involved in yeah. several other boards. Yeah. And it's 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 not easy finding people to, to do this, but uh, no, other than that, there's uh, not much there. It's a great board, and, uh, and uh, if anybody ever wants to attend one of those meetings, one of the things we try to do all the time is bring somebody in to speak so that they can go out and talk to others about that. And, you know, maybe one of the things that on this, uh, this tag you're talking about that, you know, come and talk to the, to the board at some point, that would be a great thing. To I would, I, I was just about to say the same thing and also to ask you how, how diverse is the board? Is it all Latinos? Is yeah, it? there's uh there's one or two, uh, yeah. but yeah, the majority is Latino, and the ones that are not uh, Latino are very active in the, in the Hispanic community, mm -hmm. one way or another. Hmm. Hmm. Julie, 
we should have a side conversation. Okay. okay. Nothing exactly. from Julie. Yeah. But David. Yeah, a couple of things. <clears throat> Just briefly, um, the last sustainability meeting for the coalition was uh, last uh, month, and there wasn't a whole lot new. They did. They reviewed some of the stuff that's gone on over this last year, and quite frankly, I'm quite impressed. And I'm quite impressed with the whole city, as a matter of fact, as far as uh, efforts and sustainability. But uh, just a quick review, there's been a beneficial building electrification plan that was passed by the city, and they're coming back to you from our direction, as I understand it, but it's in motion. Uh, there was a zero waste resolution, uh, and they got some pretty ambitious goals there, and that was uh, passed. I don't remember when that was passed, uh, a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. In December, uh, I think in the meeting after next, there's going to be the Universal Recycling Ordinance that's going to be on the agenda that will have some impact. Uh, commercial buildings for sure, probably, and uh, multi-structure or multi-family structures, and I don't know the details. I don't know if anybody knows the details at this point, but. That's on the agenda. So you got those three major pieces that are going on in the community. And I mean, how can you not be impressed? And I saw in the paper the other day, Longmont got an award uh, for mm -hmm. sustainability. I forget what it was called, but you know, that's pretty impressive. One of the things, just interestingly, that was mentioned that uh, one of the members, uh, Matthew Hopkin, I think his name is, he's talking he's about. He's everywhere. <laughs> Right fields and landfill solar. That was an intriguing idea. I don't know if you've heard about this before, but the idea is if you take old landfills or you take landfills that are going to be phased out, and rather than try to make park parking lots or shopping centers out of them, or just let them sit, you put solar panels over them. And I guess this is fairly common in the east and in the west, uh, like Massachusetts and I don't know, some of the other states back there. So that, that's going on. I under, I had a long conversation with uh, Zance, uh, Zach Lance uh, at, in the sustainability uh, program. And I asked him, uh, are, there, are there any plans for around here? And I, according to him, they considered it for the landfill around here, but they, uh, they, thought, they thought it was too uh, impractical. I guess there is an old one around here somewhere. I'm not really familiar with it, but so it's the sort of thing that's going on. And then the last thing I wanted to mention was uh, actually the main reason I, I called them was to see if they endorsed this document. It's called Rewiring America, Go America, um, Go electric. electric. And it, it gives kind of an outline of the IRA that's coming down the pike, the Inflation Reduction Act, which doesn't do anything about that. But anyway, that's what they called it. So uh, it outlines the kinds of programs and the kinds of incentives that are going to be available down the pike. And all I will say is that we just need to watch that. The feds don't, we don't know exactly what's happening with the feds. We don't know exactly what's happening with the states. We don't know what's going to happen at the local level. But I will say this, as far as the money that's going to be available, it sounds like for low income, I, was just, I just put a, Quick estimate: of Low-income people would be below sixty-six thousand uh, dollars household in this community. Moderate would be one hundred and fifty and less. Those are the people that would be eligible for upfront discounts on the kinds of things that are going to be funded through the IRA. Anybody above that, and that would be most of the people in this room, you don't get any upfront discounts, but you do get tax credits, and so up to around thirty percent. So I'm just saying now that we just need to watch that. And when it comes down the pike, we wanna make sure that the seniors, whether we do something or whether the city does it or the state or whatever, we just need to watch it. Um, and I can add a little okay. <coughs> to that quickly. Um, uh, the reason that the Beneficial Electrification Committee has to come back is largely the um, IRA and and some other unknowns, um, so uh, having to having to do with um, whether some outside agencies, you know, the the timelines and the code updates that will require, say, new buildings to be all electric, um, new upgrades to be electric, etc. Um, and 
Um, things are pretty much set at the federal level, I think, but the state has to make, uh, has to do rulemaking about who, how they're going to administer their rebates and how you apply for them. And that's the big unknown. Uh, but one thing that people can be fairly certain of is, is that um, any expenditures in 2023 will get the federal tax advantages that are in the IRA law. So, it, you know, it's, there, there's some squishiness about when the rebates kick in and how you apply for them, and that's what we're going to have to publicize. And the other thing is we need to set goals. Um, people need to understand that you don't just slap a heat pump instead of your um, old gas furnace. What you have to do is you make sure your house is tight, um, properly insulated, you know, do your windows need new stripping, it, it, any of that stuff. You do that first or else you'll missize uh, your electric appliances. And that is actually, the city's had rebate programs or subsidy programs for that for years, and there's just no uptake on it. And that's an outreach um, thing that, for example, this board could do because there are many, many seniors that are in little old houses that leak like sieves. So a, a, a true service to get help everybody get involved in promoting that. And on to engaging caring communities. I actually was able to meet two of the people from Anschutz last week. And they told me they're waiting for ARPA funds to be released so that meetings can resume on that committee. But I guess their work has been noticed far and wide. They've actually gone to Alaska, England, etc for similar types of programs. So hopefully, you know, we'll be tapped on the shoulder to participate in the future. And we lost um, a very valuable member. So, sad. Yep, that's where I met him. So it's been my pleasure, honor to work with all of you. Thank you. Carry on the good work next year. Okay, motion to adjourn. I, <laughs> uh, yeah. I have a get acquainted roster from November, and I'm not sure who this goes to now. Who makes calls? To, Whoever wants to. To people who attended get acquainted to see if they have follow up questions or needs. Thank you, Janine. And Susan and Prudence, thank you so much sure. for your work you've done to help the senior center in the city. Um, it hasn't gone unnoticed, and thank you very much. There's a flag out there in the left park, right? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I just want to say that I will miss the book. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Carry on, train on the newbies. Right, that's right. right. And, and while we're all saying thank you, um, I hope to stay with this board, but it's not entirely under my control. Mm -hmm. And when there's a new council member, we do re swizzle yeah. stuff. Um, so I just want to say how much I appreciate all of you, especially those of you who are leaving. Um, but all of you complete. I mean, this is this is a truly wonderful board, and I hope that I didn't have a part in making people afraid to join it by telling them how effective you are. Just <laughs> <laughs> a small part of the city. You can't take all the credit. <laughs> and I want to thank you for messages sent to me regarding my brother. Yes passed away and he did go out with Sorg. Cool. So, so, yeah, thank you. I'm glad you were able to be there. Yeah. Lots of Sorg. <laughs> <laughs> so we got this officially adjourned with motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> okay, there we go.